NASA is about to launch a spacecraft on a nearly six-year journey to visit an asteroid named Psyche. The spacecraft will be exploring the asteroid made of metal. Psyche orbits the outer region of the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Joining us now for more on this is CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood. Uh, Bill, good to talk to you. Launch us, uh, walk us through this launch. Now we're going to get the go. Yeah, you know, this is uh, fairly exciting as these things go. Not that any rocket launch isn't, but this is a Falcon Heavy. It's the most powerful rocket, operational rocket in the SpaceX inventory. This is only the eighth flight of this rocket, and it's the first time NASA's used a Falcon Heavy to send a spacecraft to deep space. So there's quite a lot riding on it. This is a $1.2 billion mission to go explore this asteroid named Psyche, uh, which might be the remnant, you know, core of an ancient planetoid that got destroyed early in the solar system. They're hoping by studying Psyche, they'll learn more about how the cores of rocky planets like Earth, Mars, Venus, Mercury, how they might have formed four and a half billion years ago. So then, like, give us a sense of how this mission is supposed to unfold. Like, the, the rocket is going to fly around the asteroid, it's going to crash into it. What's the, what's the plan? Oh, there it goes. Well, let me, yeah, let's come back to that in just a minute. On a mission to a metal asteroid in deep space to study the building blocks of our planet's inner space. Vehicles pitching down range. M1D chamber pressure is nominal. View there from the onboard camera on the booster. Beautiful shot there as it goes through the clouds. Nominal. Here we hear Joe, the power telemetry nominal. We're also looking at the data for all 27 engines. And Falcon is all supersonic. All chamber pressures look good, and Falcon is supersonic now. Throttling down in preparation for Max Q. A moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket. What will happen here Max is Q. the side boosters will uh, be at full power, and the center core will be at a reduced power to go through max Q to reduce the pressures on the structure of the launch vehicle. Coming up in 30 seconds. We'll start getting ready to have those boosters cut off. Vehicle's looking good, pitching down range. They're all telemetry looks really good so far, Daryl. As we see a beautiful view of uh, the Falcon Heavy and uh, center core and side boosters there. Data is looking really good. All 27 engines of the Falcon Heavy. All right, Bill, so it looks like things are going according to plan. Uh, so let's circle back to the question that I asked you. What, what is supposed to be a successful mission here? What's this supposed to do? Well, it's going to take, uh, as you said, nearly six years to get to its target, the asteroid called 16 Psyche. That's out in the ast outer asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It's one of only nine known metal-rich asteroids, and they think it's, uh, oh, look at that. There go the two side boosters falling away. Mm -hmm. They're going to be coming back to landings uh, here at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in uh, just a few minutes while the second stage continues the climb to orbit. Um, anyway, like I was saying, the asteroid 16 Psyche uh, may be the remnant core of an ancient planetesimal that got uh, destroyed or broke apart back at the dawn of the solar system. They're going to spend two years in orbit around this asteroid, and if all goes well, they're hoping to learn a lot more about how rocky cores formed. You know, you can't look at the core of our Earth. It's too hot. It's too dense, too deep. Uh, but by looking at this, they, they hope to gain some insights into how the rocky planets like Earth formed back at the beginning of the solar system. Hmm. And so it's, is it going to be just yeah, it's a very flying? ambitious mission. I was going to say, so is it, is it going to be, because uh, asteroids are moving, right? So is it supposed to be flying oh, yeah. just very, very close so we can get a good look at it? Yeah, it's, it's really remarkable. You know, first of all, they're going to go by Mars in 2026 to get a gravity assist boost. Mm. That's going to change the trajectory and send it on its way to the asteroid. 
Uh, and then it's going to initially start off a, a few hundred kilometers above the asteroid, but later in the mission, it's going to get down to within about 47 miles of the surface. I mean, that's, that's pretty close as these things go. Uh, it's going to spend two years in orbit, so we've got high-resolution cameras, uh, magnetometers, spectrometers, uh, all of that, you know, to get an enormous amount of data on this asteroid. Uh, and, you know, this is really something they've been looking forward to a long time. They're going to have to wait a while yet to get the data back, uh, but hopefully it'll be worth it in the end. Uh, this is incredible to me because everything has to go perfectly right, right? It has to sort of get close enough oh, yeah. to Mars to get that boost that they that it needs. And I'm a terrible, like, um, I'm terrible at pool because you know, it's all about those angles. So I can't, it's like, it's like a universal game of pool, <laughs> like you're... You know, it's got to hit hit yeah, it really Mars is. properly, not hit it, but get close enough to get springboarded into the right direction to, to a target that's, that's I don't know how fast an asteroid's moving, but I imagine it's moving really fast. Well, you know, it's, it's not really the speed of the asteroid, it's the distance. You know, by the time the probe gets there, it will have traveled 2.2 billion miles. Uh, so it is a long journey. It's a, the solar system's a big place. It takes a long time to get out there. Uh, but it all started right, right here, right now. This is what kicks it off. Uh, as you said, this, this, you know, interplanetary bank shot is all set up with the launch time, and uh, it got off on time, and it's on the way. Bill, uh, let me just ask you a sort of a bigger picture question. <coughs> um, Excuse me. One of the things that I'm always fascinated by is as our planet is in turmoil, uh, that there are still incredible things happening um, uh, that supersede, or not supersede, but that imagine, um, because as you've pointed out, this is, it's going to take six years for this thing to get to where it's supposed to be. Uh, a lot will happen on this planet in those six years. Um, who is, like, what, so in a typical launch like this, and there have been many where it takes many, many years for satellites and rovers and all sorts of things to get uh, to their location um, in the solar system. Um, who keeps track of this? I mean, in a world where people quit their jobs and yeah, what's, what's the coffee, coffee quitting? Change. Yeah, administrations yeah. change. Uh, political, you know, political parties um, change. Because you can't be like, of, you know, we're not going to fund that mission anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's in the middle of it. So yeah. how does that work? Yeah. Just in general, like, who is keeping track of this over the many, many years that a, 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 a spacecraft like this is on its journey? Well, in this case, and like all of these missions, they are, it, it, many, many years go into these things before you get to a launch like we saw today. You know, the Psyche mission has been in progress uh, for more than a decade. That's how long they've been working on this. And so, you know, it's like anybody else that has a job. You get up and go to work in the morning. And in this case, you know, hundreds and hundreds of engineers and scientists get up and go to work and plan missions like this. And they certainly don't stop, you know. I mean, I, I take your point, you know, I mean, Yesterday, I was in my home office watching video from the International Space Station, and they had a beautiful pass right above uh, Israel. And you could, you could look down and see the Dead Sea. You could see where Jerusalem was, all from orbit. And the thing the astronauts always say is you don't see borders from space, right? Mm. And you don't. It looks utterly peaceful when you look at these images down there. But uh, uh, certainly, uh, missions like this take place against that backdrop of, of earthly events. And, and, and the men and women that work on them, they're aware of this, too, but, but, you know, they've devoted a big portion of their lives to making this a success, and that's not going to stop. They're going to get it to Psyche if they possibly can. All right, Bill Hardwood, it's uh, really fascinating stuff. Thank you so much.